Hallo Leute und herzlich willkommen zurück zu einer neuen Episode von Let's Play Gabriel Knight Sins of the Fathers. Wir sind im Voodoo Museum und ich würde sagen, bevor wir Dr. John mit unseren Fragen löchern, der bestimmt die eine oder andere interessante Antwort für uns parat halten wird, sehen wir uns hier erstmal ein bisschen um. Es ist ja nicht so super unglaublich viel. Das war draußen der Trommler. A street drummer has settled outside the museum. Gabriel can't do anything with the drummer on the street. Anything? <lacht> Ein Ventilator. There's a beaten up old fan in the window. It's silent at the moment. Aha, aber warum? The fan is entrenched in the window frame. The fan might operate, but not in that way. Gabriel, geh mal ein bisschen zur Seite hier. Da ist nämlich noch ein Schalter. It's an electrical switch. Ja, äh, schalt vielleicht den Ventilator ein. What does this do? Turn that thing off. Oh, sorry. We have air conditioning, you see. Yeah, I see. Habt ihr gesehen, wie die Schlange darauf reagiert hat? Das haben wir ja gelesen, dass die auf Vibrationen äh, echt anspringen. Eine kleine Info, die wir vielleicht im Hinterkopf behalten sollten. A leather whip hangs from a peg on the wall. Oh, hurt me. The Voodoo Shrine is filled with items that both fascinate Gabriel and also make his skin crawl. Ja, so ein bisschen, ne? Guckt euch das mal an, ja. Will that look sacrilegious? Ein bisschen. Magenta Moonbeam. Voodooian. A flyer advertising Magenta Moonbeam, a local Voodooian. Her parlor is on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. Ich glaube, wir haben gerade einen weiteren Ort für potenzielle Voodoo-Nachforschungen gefunden, Leute. Was haben wir hier noch? Eine schwarze Kette. They lend a certain psychotic ambiance, no? We wouldn't be much of a voodoo museum without a voodoo doll. Und der Sarg. This coffin is so small. Okay. Reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. Looks like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> a paar Kerzen. Flickering candles lend an appropriately spooky atmosphere to the museum. An official voodoo wishing stunt. Rub it and make a wish, a card says. Funny, I say the same thing to women. <laughs> ja, nee, ist klar. I wish Molly Getty were mine forever. Really, I mean it. What was that? Huh? Nothing. Interessant. An authentic looking pole marks the center of the room. Authentic what? Gabriel isn't sure. The pole is solidly connected to the floor. Ja, versuch was wär's. Ja, Totenfall, was haben wir noch? Eine Trommel. Large elaborate drums occupy a corner of the museum. Please do not touch the drums. They are authentic. Authentic word. Drums. Do not touch them. Das sind authentische Trommeln. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. I mess up. Gabriel doesn't want anything to do with that knife. Hmm. Yeah, right. I'd probably cut my own head off with that thing. Oder dein Herz hinaus? The back wall displays various voodoo items such as offerings of fruits to the voodoo deities. The back wall, an African statue laden with decorations. Now, why does that remind me of Grace? Sorry, ich muss mir das jetzt noch ein paar Mal angucken hier, bis sich der Text wiederholt. The back wall, bottles of liquor and wine. The back. Lots of burning candles. 
De back a gaudy shell necklace. De back a cupid statue. That's it's nice to know voodoo has a romantic side. De back offerings of. So, jetzt wieder holt es sich. Okay. Das ist die Wand. Kann man da was von mitnehmen? Even if that were for sale, Gabriel couldn't afford it. Das ist natürlich klar. Ein Gemälde noch. That must be Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau, die Gründerin des Voodoo, oder? War das nicht so? Da sind noch Flaggen. Gabriel doesn't recognize the museum's flags. Hier ist noch ein Altar. Interessant ist vor allem diese Schlange da hinten. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. The snake is too far away. The python is quite dangerous. I would stay back if I were you. Thanks for the advice. Dr. John. Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. Given the man's size, that doesn't seem advisable. Benutze Dr. John. Gut, reden wir mal mit dem guten Doktor. Vielleicht kann er uns ja ein paar Hinweise geben. Could I ask you a few questions? That is why I am here. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah. You have perhaps noticed the museum snake, Mr. Knight? They are beautiful creatures. Do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Is this snake yours? Do you use it in your practice of voodoo? I admire the spirit of the snake, Mr. Knight. But snakes like the museums can be quite dangerous to handle. You, you didn't really answer my question. I think I did, Mr. Knight. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes. If you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life. And I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us just say I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am not an easy person to get to know. I am a very private man. Isn't that unusual for someone in the museum business? Not at all. My display speak for me. Not everyone can come see the museum, so I occasionally do public speaking on the subject of historical voodoo. Anything coming up that I might attend? No. But then you have me all to yourself right now, do you not? That's not right. Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then let us discuss something else. So. Einfach mal reden. So how is the museum business? Those who truly seek to understand are few, Mr. Knight. But even one can be an audience. Sounds about like my shop. So where do you pick up all this stuff? Oh, here and there. We accept donations of any pertinent items. Do you ever get any wackos in here? You mean, besides yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides me. I do not care to make those kinds of judgments, Mr. Knight. All are welcome here. You're a big guy, aren't you? You work out, play sports? I do not play basketball, if that is what you want to know. Who, me? 
No, you just look like such a natural athlete. I do find ways of keeping fit, Mr. Knight. After all, our bodies are temples. You sound like Grace. I should get the two of you together. Is Grace your wife? No, she just acts like it. So what do you think of our summer weather? Have you ever seen it so overcast or so muggy? It is unpleasant. The heavens are not pleased these days. Nice outfit. I prefer simple cotton to dead flesh, Mr. Knight. I'll have to remember that. This is quite a place you have here. Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States, as far as I am concerned. What is it about New Orleans that you so admire? It is a real culture of its own, Mr. Knight. Amid the horrid blandness that is Americana, New Orleans alone has a voice. Spoken like a true Norlinian. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper. I know they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. What makes you think the voodoo murders aren't being done by local practitioners? Voodoo is a popular boogeyman, Mr. Knight. Especially in New Orleans. Anyone can pretend to use it. Just as anyone can pretend to be a black belt in karate. And for the same reason. To intimidate. I know voodoo in this city, Mr. Knight. And believe me, it is not about killing. Even the police have stated that the killings have nothing to do with local voodoo. So you know nothing about the voodoo murders case? I neither know nor care to know, Mr. Knight. My only possible interest is in how it might affect the public's attitude towards the museum. So far, it has not been an issue. No one has even had the bad taste to bring it up. Until you, that is. Danke. Ich bin gerne der Erste. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo. Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city. Das macht einen Unterschied? Na gut. Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight. And will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion, formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies, with the French and Spanish-ran Plantation Islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importings of slaves from that region. So how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. And what happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight. If only in the form of a communal barn. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Link Pontchartrain. Ah. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. 
Das ist interessant. Der Strand von Lake Pontchartrain war also ein alter Versammlungsort für Voodoo, ja? Wahrscheinlich ungefähr da, wo wir die Leiche gefunden haben. Und die alten Voodoo-Religionen beteten also auch Schlangen an, ja? Ganz ehrlich, hier kommen immer mehr und mehr und mehr Informationen, die darauf hindeuten, dass das Voodoo in diesen Morden vielleicht nicht ganz so fake ist, wie in den Nachrichten behauptet wird. Tell me more about historical Voodoo. By 1817, the Voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons, and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances, right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Hmm. Ja, wir mussten uns das tatsächlich alles einmal anhören, weil wir letztendlich zu Marie Laveau durchkommen mussten die äh, relevant ist für unsere weitere Geschichte, also für allgemein für das Verständnis, soweit ich mich erinnere. Are you sure you can't tell me anything about Voodoo? I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. Das ist heute eine Folge, wo wirklich viel geredet und geredet und geredet wird, auch viele Informationen über Voodoo, aber es ist auch wichtig für das Verständnis des Settings und ehrlich gesagt, ich finde es auch relativ interessant. Tell me about current Voodoo. Many people think of Voodoo in terms of magic spells or gri gri. That kind of practice is actually called Hoodoo and is only a part of true Voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in the religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I personally am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. What exactly is hoodoo? Hoodoo refers to magic folk traditions of the South. Hoodoo is a bastard of voodoo. Many of the Gri Gri are similar. But hoodoo does not have the religious aspects of voodoo. Tell me about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any run-in this week? No, but the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. When the widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooians in the city. By 1830, She was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. The widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight. 
however she achieved it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously, very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money, that is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius, rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands, of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when Widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reading a long time by then. After the death of the widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. You have heard everything about Marie Laveau that a layman might expect to understand. Ja, das habe ich mir schon gedacht. Die haben nämlich gerade in den Chief unterhalten, Voodoo 101. Ja, aber auch hier relativ lange mit Dr. John geredet. Bevor ich gehe, Doktor, gibt es noch etwas, das ich Ihnen gerne zeigen würde? Do these marks look familiar? They look like the scribbling of a child to me. Okay, thanks. Das war ein Versuch wert. Hätte ja auch was bei rauskommen können. Na gut. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Come back again. Bis später. Puh. So, wir haben gleich zwei neue Orte, die wir auch wieder aussuchen können jetzt hier. Die Wohnung von Madame Moonbeam. Und den St. Louis Friedhof, wo ja angeblich sich das Grab von Marilla Vo befinden soll. Und das würde ich mir ganz gerne als erstes mal ansehen. Uh, was haben wir denn da? Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. Gabriel can't take the marks with him that way. The wall doesn't work that way. Ja, ich versuch's mal. The wall doesn't work that way. Nee, ich dachte, ich versuch's mal. Gut, ich würde sagen, die äh, malen wir uns gleich mal wieder ab hier. Denn das sieht echt interessant aus. I want a copy of these strange marks. Hat er gemacht, jo. Okay. Vielleicht sollten wir damit auch nochmal zu Dr. John zurück, wenn wir hier fertig sind. Baustein, gut, damit sind die Zeichen auf die Wand gemalt worden, definitiv, ne? Here and there in the cemetery, straggly plants grow in stone planters. Hey, wo bist du hin? Hi. Food, trinkets and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb as offerings from believers. No thanks. Ah, mitnehmen will er nichts davon. Hier ist noch ein Standbild. A stone angel stands silently before a tomb. Ausgang zur Grabkammer. Das klingt interessant. Dann gehen wir nochmal gucken. Uh. The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Geddy. Das ist bestimmt eine Verbindung zu Malia, Geddy. Two enormous vases flanked the front of the Getty tomb. 
Gabriel looks at and in the vases, but he doesn't see anything he wants to take. Ich bin an dem Punkt, wo ich nicht mehr wirklich das Bedürfnis habe, wirklich alles mit allem zu versuchen. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. Was haben wir hier noch? An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. There's a small marble plate near the tomb doors. Der sollten wir uns mal näher ansehen. The plate is in lock position. There's a keyhole on the plate, but Gabriel can't operate that without a key. Wir brauchen also einen Schlüssel. It's locked shut. Vorher kommen wir da nicht rein. Na gut. Um, I don't need to go visit the family tomb today. Ja, mein Familiengrab. I don't need to go. Wrights Grabkammer, ja klar. Uh. Ah, hier, ja, der Wachmann ist wieder da. Lass mit dir nochmal kurz unterhalten, bevor wir wieder gehen. Hallo, Bär. Got a sec? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. Oh God! Oh God! He gets fear. You been working here a long time? Longer than you've been alive, son. I may helps be here longer than you'll be alive, for that matter. <laughs> kind of a quiet job you've got, isn't it? Most of the time, yeah. They act up some at the full moon, though. You must enjoy the company of dead folks. Unlike the living, they ain't never given me no reason to dislike them none. How's business today? About like every day. It's what you call a seller's market. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery, number one. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins will float right out of their graves. Ha! Them dead go floating right down into the quarter. Of course, if it were Mardi Gras, nobody would even notice. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War. Back further, too. Take a look around. You'll see. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery, number one. Just look around. You'll get the feel of the place. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis number one. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, of course, but a big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for them. Sometimes they so grief bound, they don't know what they doing. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't really care to talk about it. I don't do it none myself. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Isn't it just awful, them finding old bodies with the voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody trying to cover their tracks is all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I told you all I know about that. What can you tell me about Narlins? Seem like everyone wants to visit Narlins at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery tours. I see tourists in here every day of the year. What can you tell me about Narlins? There are lots of things to see here, but none as beautiful as St. Louis Cemetery Number One. What can you tell me about Narlins? If you want to know more, you should ask someone else. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them aren't poisonous, of course. I don't mind snakes myself, but lots of folks are afraid of them. Do you know anything about snakes? I told you all I know about that. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans, a powerful voodoo yen and a powerful sorceress. Believers still come to her tomb, you know, 
They write secret marks on the walls, leave offerings. Their needs are tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from that voodoo museum, he's here at least once a day. Ah. But Marie Laveau's tomb isn't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. Tatsächlich nicht. You said there were other mark tombs? Yep. I've seen bull hearts left on tombs in a nest of vulture feathers, pleats of peas and congree. Animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this is one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. What other tombs got marked? Can you show me? No, no, I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the families, and rightly so. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Her tombs on all our tours. Even the Baptists come around here to gawk. Of course, you may not know this, but some of the real serious voodoo types argue that she ain't in this one at all. Down in the unmarked tomb in number three. It's all the same to me, I say. Save me a lot of cleanup work if she weren't here, if you ask me. Danke. Eine Frage hätte ich noch ganz kurz, bevor du dich hier verziehst. Hier. Kann man dazu was sagen? Does this mean anything to you? Sure. I see them marks all the time on the tombs. Don't know what they mean though. Danke. Ich würde sagen, wir sind zwar eigentlich schon über die Folgenlänge hinaus. Aber wir gehen noch mal kurz ins Voodoo Museum zurück. Ich will Dr. John. Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight. Ich will Dr. John die äh, Markierung hier noch schnell zeigen. Vielleicht kann er damit was anfangen. Do these symbols mean anything to you? No. They look like nonsense to me. Where did you get them, if I might inquire? Oh, I saw them scribbled somewhere. Just graffiti, I guess. I see. By the way, I forgot to warn you, Mr. Knight. The local cemeteries are quite dangerous. Buggers, vandals. I would avoid going there alone if I were you. Really? Thanks for the advice. Hmm. Ich finde, das war eine überaus interessante Reaktion gerade eben. Tiefere Bedeutung, die suchen wir dann allerdings erst in der nächsten Folge. Von Gabriel Knight. Sins of the Fathers. Ich finde, also ich, wir sind über den Initialschock ganz gut rübergekommen. Es, es geht, ja. Also, äh, man, man kommt dann doch ganz gut rein. Ich, äh, ich denke, ich werde dabei bleiben. Ich denke, wir machen doch das Remake. Äh, ich hoffe, ihr seht das genauso. Und wir sehen uns nächste Woche in einer neuen Folge wieder. Bis dann.